Chapter 7 Part 1 Today I shall speak of a variety of matters. I shall end, as I said last week, with certain information about the schools of initiates. You will realize that there was a great deal of vegetation and life in Yanini, and you will remember that I told you that no crop manual labor was used. The growth of this form of life was entirely under the third Krishnath ray, the ray of nature growth. The seed harvests were gathered in by the Yanihis, and planted again in due season by them. But only when the moon planet Kuvila was at its fullness, this planet, Kuvila, is directly the intermediate stage through which the third ray passes, before it contacts your earth. You must understand that most of the cosmic rays come to you in a filtered condition. The earth could not stand the fullness of their strength otherwise. I have not referred until now to the seas and rivers in Yanini, know this, that Yanini was one solid block of land, though not solid as you know it now. There were no dividing seas or oceans, and not until its latter days were there any rivers or inland seas. These only came when the splitting of the earth's surface, due to internal upheavals of the earth, formed the fissures in which the water collected. Also there were no mountains as you know them, only gentle undulations. The seas then were not salt, and their purpose was solely to surround Yanini for the purpose of humidation of the air, to give greater ease in breathing. A dry atmosphere would not have suited the quality of the early Yanihian bodies. The humidity which arose from these stretches of water also aided the life of the vegetation. The animal life was of great size, as the men and women. They were the progenitors of that race of mammoth creatures which you have read of, and whose remains may be seen still in your curio collections. But these did not appear, as known to your scientists, until the beginning of the period following Lamana, known now as Atlantis. Footnote, referring to a period of history known as Hyipta, 3,500,000 years ago, inhabited by a race of mankind from the planet Tash. It was in this epoch that the twelve pyramids were built as places of worship, constructed of pure amethyst, and raised into position by the power of thought by a spiritual race assisted by the hierarchy. Hyipta later became known as Egypt, I have told you that the Yanihis did not eat, the mouth then was solely for the purpose of breathing, speaking, and birth. The nose was large, and was used for scent chiefly, and also for the intake of the cosmic essences, passing from thence direct to the heart and glands. Present earth people, little realize the importance of the nasal organs. This is mainly because you have ceased to indraw these finer essences. The Yanihis were a cultured race and hungry for knowledge. Schools of initiates into the higher mysteries were formed by us, one in each state, or country. Each school was under the direct influence of the cosmic rays. Twelve rays, twelve schools. In each school, the initiate studied the particular properties of the ray he was in contact with, and after a period of 24 of your earth years, he would pass on to another school. So, the entire Yanihian population passed in time through every school. I have not told you until now that the life of a Yanihi was of vast length, in your time. Some lived to the age of six to seven hundred years. Death, as you know it, did not take place, either in animal or vegetable life. At the end of their appointed time, with knowledge as complete as could be attained at that period of evolution, they passed back to the nebulous by the indrawn breath of the particular adept under whose guidance he was placed. There were, then, schools of the Atrum Ray, the Bama Ray, the Medical Ray, the Clusion Plane Ray, the Fachnic Ray, the Kyanic Ray of Foresight, of the Tenth Solar Plane, and so on. And, over all, under the supreme leadership, were the twelve school governed and led by the Love Ray, direct from the innermost plane, the fountain head, the solar logos. He is love, from his twelve fingers flow the essences induced by love itself, manifesting through the laws of love, into the twelve cosmic rays, into, meaning, through them, the twenty-four lesser rays, and so running the whole gamut of the universe, until finally contacting the soul matter of the little human man. The workings are too complicated for you to fully understand my children. Each one of you still contacts his own birth ray, one of the great twelve, through the Feta Ray. You must understand that the Feta Ray has always governed the human birth processes, right down the ages from Yanini. You may destroy your solid earth, but you cannot destroy essences from the great ones. These schools of learning then, were built in the most accessible part of each country. Mine was in Elhania, and each school had its temple attached. The outward appearance of these buildings seemed a stone, but was not so. They were formed of a pale grey substance occasionally thrown up by the earth, due to the expansion of certain newly forming gases in the interior. Rather like a very substantial form of froth. This slightly hardened as it contacted the air and, with its complete saturation in the Atrum Ray, it formed a fit substance wherein to house knowledge. The Yanihis built a large part of their own schools, and the rest was finished by us, through the thought process. As in the case of the dwellings, the walls in the interior were lined with Tahinate. This substance was a ready conductor of magnetic and electric heat, which reached the earth plane from the ninth ray, the Matsum ray. These initiates, amongst whom were you, Inhunio, and my daughter, Chavarini's, narration note, 
both of whom are members of the group of solar teachings receiving these channeled messages from Lord Michael, were in most cases destined, through rigorous training, to be the adepts of the lesser degree, who were directly responsible for the early training of the Lamanas, the Atlanteans. As time passed to the second age of your Earth planet, women were also enrolled as adepts. Daily then, did this precious first Earth race meet in the early hours in their schools, commencing the day first by a paean of worship to the great God and the God of the Sun Plains. The symbol of the Sun was worn on a band on every brow. It was not as the infinite that these Earth children worshipped the Solar One, but with a knowledge that only through Him could they come into direct contact with the Great Godhead. Their studies continued, by thought process, for 12 hours then for 12 more hours by direct speech from us, and finally after a service of twilight in the temple, these people returned to their homes, to spend the remaining part of their day, of 58 hours, in discussion. You must discuss, talk, speak, it is only thus that the finite mind can unfold itself, and only by this means that we can contact your desires and wishes. We had in our schools vast sheets of Tahi Nate, treated especially by a trune, whereon the rays could be directed to convey special interior knowledge direct from the solar one. This only happened once in two of your earth months. I cannot speak more of this. It was part of the initiation into the lodge of the 72 light rays. We had many lodges attached to the schools. Your present Masonic lodges had their origin in Yanini. Footnote. Although modern form masonry was founded in Egypt approximately 3,400,000 years ago by a priesthood called the Masun, the first priesthood to labor with their hands. The peaceful, happy life of this dear race passed evenly on its way, not knowing that its early attempts to store wisdom and mysticism for future races was destined not to come to pass. My children, store up every grain of knowledge that you can. It is life, and love. Do not be too contented with the trades of life, they mean nothing. The schools, colleges, lodges, still exist in the soul planes, I want you to reach up to them. In Nate Kalok Doc. Until we meet again.